I've noticed that some of you are confused about what ND filters do and don't do, but I totally get why. And that's why in this video, I will try to carefully go into your brain and then rip out the part where the confusion exists. It won't hurt, I promise. So let's say you're shooting a video like I'm doing right now, then there are four settings super important. Frame rate, shutter speed, ISO and aperture. Three of these settings also control exposure in both photography and video. Sometimes it's called the exposure triangle. So that means that I can set and control the exposure by adjusting each of these three settings. For example, if my image is overexposed, I have three options. I can shoot at a higher aperture number, a lower ISO number or a faster shutter speed. All of those adjustments will do the same, lower the exposure, less light. But they all work differently and the problem also is that each setting not only affects exposure but also the look of your image and that's super important here. Aperture controls the amount of blur in the background, shutter speed controls the amount of motion blur and ISO, well, the higher the ISO number the more noisy your image will be. Okay, now let's say I want my image, my video to look exactly like this, what you see here. This amount of background blur, that's aperture 2.0. This amount of natural looking motion blur, that's what I like. That's frame rate 24 frames per second and a shutter speed of 1 50th. And then ISO, well, I'm already at base ISO, 640. That's the best performing ISO for this camera and color profile. I shouldn't go any lower. For some cameras it's 100, for some cameras it's 800, it depends. So check your manual. But anyway, so here in my studio, right now the exposure is perfect. But that's also because I can control the output of my key light here. With this remote control, I can increase or decrease the output and I will always have the perfect exposure no matter what my camera settings are. But what if I want to use these camera settings, these exact camera settings, because I like the look of this, what if I want to use these camera settings outside where I can't control the light? Well, let's go outside and I'll show you what happens. As you can see guys, it's completely overexposed. So now what? Well, I could close down the aperture to f let's see all the way down to f22 exposure looks okay now but of course i lose that nice blurred out background i could also increase the shutter speed to achieve the same exposure but then i'll lose that nice natural motion blur and iso i'm already down at base iso so i need something else to lower the exposure an ND filter. It's a dark piece of glass and it blocks out light. Some ND filters block a fixed amount of light, but this ND filter is a variable one, so I can set the amount of light that it blocks. So let's set the aperture back to f2.0 to get that nice blurred out background there, and then put on the ND filter. Let's see. And there we go, perfect exposure, nice blurred out background and natural looking motion blur. I can use exactly the same settings as before in my studio without overexposing my image. So that's what an ND filter does. It lowers the exposure without having to adjust the camera settings. Now, what an ND filter doesn't do is increase dynamic range. And if you don't know what dynamic range is, check out my previous video right here. But I totally understand why there's that confusion. Because a wide or high dynamic range sensor allows you to capture both bright highlights and dark shadows in the same image and keep detail in both. An ND filter in a way does something similar, but not really. An ND filter by lowering the exposure brings back detail in the sky for example, but and here's the problem, it lowers the exposure for the whole image, not just for the highlights, also the shadows. And that means that your shadows will get darker and if your sensor doesn't have enough dynamic range in the first place, you will lose detail in the shadows. If an ND filter would expand dynamic range, it would lower the exposure only for the highlights and keep the shadows the same. You know what I mean? But it doesn't do that because it's just a piece of dark glass and it lowers the exposure for the whole image. Highlights and shadows. The dynamic range 
just moves, it doesn't expand. If your camera has 10 stops of dynamic range, for example, using an ND filter will not increase or expand the dynamic range, it will just move the same 10 stops to a lower exposure. Now, what you could do to increase dynamic range is use a gradual ND filter. That's an ND filter that blocks light only at the top of the image. I mean, there are different types, but the most common one is one that blocks light at the top of the image, because that's usually where the sky is and where you will blow out the highlights. So it blocks light in the sky, so you can keep the detail, but it doesn't block anything at the bottom of the image where the shadows are. They stay exactly the same. So you are actually increasing the dynamic range, but those filters are only useful in very specific situations. And also, if there's buildings that go into the sky, you know, those buildings, the shadows in those buildings will also be darker. So, you know, only useful in very specific situations. Okay. That's it guys, I hope it helps, I hope there's a little bit less confusion now, but I totally understand why there is confusion, because it is confusing. But yeah, so I hope I ripped out some of that confusion now. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.